Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Orby 3 nwo bringing you another Black Ops Bible study. And today we're going to look at the first uh, first part of Psalms. Uh, we're actually going to do Psalm 1. Uh, for the first couple here, I'm going to be able to do one per video probably. After that, I might have to split it up uh, and just kind of go verse by verse or, or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to read it to you and then we'll discuss a little bit more. Um, so Psalm 1-1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that, blow, that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. All right, and when you're reading from the Bible and trying to understand what it means, there's, for me anyways, there's probably other ways to do this. For me, there's really three questions to look at. One, what does it literally, what does it actually say? What do the words say? Two, what does it actually mean? And three, how can you apply it to your own life? Um, so what does it say? There's a few little things in here I can probably help if they may seem kind of goofy. Sometimes wording seems funny in, in Bible language. <laughs> um, Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that, uh, doesn't only mean that you're just getting, like, advice from bad people. What it can mean is that if you're surrounded by bad people, if your friends are not living correctly, even if you aren't engaging in it, if you're still around it, it will start to consume you. That will, that will start to eat away at you. So you have to be very careful about that. Uh, another verse in another spot, and I, for some reason, I just blanked completely. Uh, talks about not being unequally yoked, and I'll get into that more in, in a later part. Um, right under that, or stand in the way of sinners. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean like blocking their way. It means standing in the same line, like standing in line with sinners. Um, but his delight in, is, is in the law of the Lord, and on it, on his law, he meditates day and night. That's very important also. Uh, it's something we should be constantly thinking about. We should We should never be making decisions without thinking is this what I should be doing? Not only for ourselves, is this what will help me, but is this something that would make God proud of me? Not necessarily is it right or wrong, because we don't really know everything if it's right or wrong, but if I do this, would it make God proud, or would it make him disappointed? And that'll usually keep you from making any mistake if you really think about that. Um, other things, another, the next part there is kind of a, a metaphor. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Uh, it's saying trees that are planted near water, they don't need rain all the time. They've got water source there. They're going to be strong and plentiful. They're always going to have their fruit. Um, as you get further away from water sources, the trees are weaker. They wither. They, you know, they die. Same thing here. The further you get from the word, the further you get from God, the further you get from the church and all of that, the easier it is for you to wither. Um... And then it goes on to talk about the wicked. And this is one that you might not understand when it says they are like chaff. Uh, if you don't know anything about grain or harvesting grain, what you have to do, at least back in these times, is they would throw the grain up in the air when they're harvesting it. And the wind would blow off all the straw and, and chaff, the useless parts, the part that there's no use for at all. It would just blow it away. And then they could harvest the actual grain and use it. So what it's saying is not so are the wicked. The wicked are not blessed. They are like chaff. They are useless. They are useless parts that get blown away by the wind. That's how easy it is to knock them out of the way because they, they stand for nothing. That's what it's basically saying, um, which it goes on in the next part. It says, therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment. Again, he's talking about the final judgment. Um, the wicked won't get judged. <laughs> they will be, they've already been decided if they're, you know, that way is, is, is over for them. We get a judgment, you know, and it's, it's going to be something that's pretty harsh for us, but if you believe you know the right things and you and you try and you work and you keep on going then you know heaven is the ultimate goal um let me see if anything else here really sticks out that you might not understand uh that that's pretty much it that's that should get you through the very first question what does it actually say uh the blessed are the men 
or, and women. When it says man, it means humans. Blessed are the humans that uh, that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, the ones that are trying to learn and trying to be good, uh, that don't stand in the way of sinners, and that don't sit in the seat of mockers. It's very important not to mock other people. Even if someone else is wicked, you shouldn't mock them because it it's not like you've it's not like we're perfect you know we've been lost at our all every single one of us has been lost on our own as well so just because someone else is lost there's no point in in making fun of them at all they're exactly where you were so just keep that in mind when you think oh how could this person do this um so what is it actually saying again psalms on some of them you can go super deep on some you don't really have to this one is it seems pretty straightforward to me uh, but they're you know if you have any uh, opinions or if you think that this can go deeper than it does or deeper than I'm taking it, I'd love to hear those in the comments section. I think that the main thing it's trying to get across is to pay attention who you take counsel from, pay attention to who your friends are, pay attention to who you listen to, because if you, if you stay in the counsel of the wicked, there's no way for you to learn, you know, goodness. If you're with wicked, there's no way to know good. Um, don't stand in the way of sinners. Don't sin, or try to try to limit the amount of sin that you do. We're all going to sin, and we're going to keep sinning. That's our nature. But try and limit it. Uh, don't sit in the seat of mockers. I just covered that. But delight in the law of the Lord and meditate about it day and night. Always think about the law of the Lord. Try and always think about the word. Try and relate it back to your life all the time. Uh, and I think that's one to answer question three. How does it apply to me? you can really that's something you can really focus on think about that like for me i do it when i'm watching movies i think about oh well, ha look this kind of goes along you know this is kind of like the the, the archetype from the bible of, of what happened there this this matches up and then i'll end up finding out oh well the guy that directed the movie was was christian or something like that uh lord of the rings is a great book to read has a lot of christian type archetypal archetypal stuff because J.R.R. tolkien was a christian so that's just a cool thing for you um the other part, talking about the second half of this, not so are the wicked. It, it's This is kind of a warning, not only to wicked people, but to you from falling off, that if you become wicked, you're useless. There's no point in you. So that's that's the thing. It, you have to keep trying to be as good as you can, and, and that's really hard, and we're always going to fail. But if you, if you focus on God and coming to Him and trying to be with Him, then you're not wicked. If you do what he says in the first part, you're, you're working, you're trying, you're going to fail. Everyone does, but there's a big difference between someone who tries not to fail and does and someone who just doesn't care and does stuff wrong 24-7. Uh, so I, I think that's a big part of it. I, I'd really love to hear what you guys think. If you got a different uh, feel from it or if you have a different opinion on it, I'd love to hear it. Um, I think the very last part is a big, big, pretty powerful thing. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. Really hope you like the videos, and uh, thanks for watching.